Hello everyone. I wanted to invite you into my beauty business journey. My name is Bridget Michelle and this is all about how I started my beauty brand. The very first year and what I did first was I just started making. So I googled a couple of things um, and I started with soap and my first batch it actually worked. It was it was really white and pretty um, and I was discovering, you know, how to make soap, um, what to put in it, what, when to use it, when not to use it, um, cold process, hot process. I was learning all about it. So I, when I say I first started making, I probably more so did a little bit of research to see what I wanted to make first. And then I did research on that thing that I decided to make first. Once I decided what I wanted to make first, then I did it. I, I got the recipe, I bought all the stuff, I went to my kitchen, I sanitized everything, and I made it. And the very, that for very first product, the soap, um, like I said, it was really pretty. It smelled really good. I used an essential oil for, it, for that, um, and I, you know, I loved it. Um, I thought it was neat. I liked the creating part of it, but... That was what I did first. So I started creating first, um, and that was my very first soap bar. The next thing I did, I would say, is once I made one bar, well, I didn't make one bar. I made like a loaf. We were actually using it, and I did a hot process, um, and with the hot process, you could use it immediately after it dried. It was pretty amazing that I could use it right away. I, I did something that I could test out right away myself, quickly and so then I used um, kind of that recipe and and played around with different things so I would say you know I did a lot of testing and research a lot and I had a lot of time because my husband um, was in a medic program and so he wasn't around a lot and when he was around he was studying and so it was difficult for me I wanted to fill my time now Keep in mind, I did work 40 hours a week, which um, that took a lot of time. And then after work and then on weekends, I was in the kitchen and on the computer and with a notebook taking notes. And, you know, I got a, a, um, a numbers document and I started making um, a spreadsheet of recipes. It was, it was a long journey. I... But I will say, once I made one bar of soap that I made, it was, I went wackadoo, <laughs> crazy. I went crazy because I'm like, wow, I can make soap. This is pretty neat. And I didn't use soap. I liked shower gel better. But once I used soap, I'm like, wow, soap lasts a lot longer. My husband loved it. I was giving it away. Um, and it was just a lot of fun. I was getting a lot of feedback from people. And giving my stuff away, I, I did a lot of learning. I would say my very first year, I just did, I made things, I gave it away. Listening to people's feedback. You know, you have to be open. And it's hard because, you know, you can have critics, um, a lot of critics. I had a lot of positive, uh, well, you know, a lot of positive comments. And that was helpful because that really pushed me along. Um, so I had a lot of support, which was really nice. But I'm like, hmm, if I could do soap, what else could I do? So that really took off. So learning about ingredients and doing the research. Um, learning ingredients was going online and reading and reading and reading. And I even spent time at Target um, in the soap aisle and I would just flip the labels and read them. Flip the labels, read them, flip the labels, read them. And I um, started making soap because I was allergic. Um, I would start itching and I'd get hives and it was really an uncomfortable situation. So making soap for me was solving a problem. And I even spent time at Target um, in the soap aisle and I would just flip the labels. Spending that time in the aisle, reading all the labels, it wasn't just on YouTube and um, just talking to people, asking them the things they liked, they didn't like. Um, I, I was like a sponge and I 
came back and, you know, put all that information together. And then I formulated what I was going to do. So when you start something, basically you just have to start. You're learning, you're listening, you're watching. Uh, I took a lot of notes. I wish I would have recorded a lot of things. And I, I listened to a lot of pe good people about marketing and business. And they said, you know, record everything that you do. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. I need to make. I've really evolved in two years. And it, it does take a lot of time. Um, but, you know, don't give up. Don't give up. If this is something that you want to do, you know, I just encourage you to start. Don't let the voices in your head say, you can't do this or you can't do that. Start. Even if it's just taking notes. Get a notebook, take notes. When you talk to people, ask them questions. When you're watching a YouTube video, take notes about that. Number one, consume. Consume what you can. Read what you can. Learn what you can about what you're going to do. And then, and then take a leap of faith and do it. Just try it and see where you end up. So start. Don't stop. Just try it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And if you like something and you want to do something, start taking notes. Start watching videos. Just try. You know, people don't get anywhere unless you try it. Um, you may not be like, I'm not a huge business right now. Um, I go to fairs and sell my stuff and uh, people really like it and they order on my website and I love that. I appreciate that and my fan base is growing and I love that and I appreciate that. And there's people that don't like my stuff and that's okay. That's okay because when I go to the store, I might buy something from one um, company and not, and then never buy something else from that company. Like, you know, if you buy Maybelline, right? You may love their lipstick, but hate their mascara. Or you may love their mascara, hate their lipstick. I get it. I, I, I want to be careful about what I make and make sure that I make the it the best that I can and actually adjust even when it's good. There's times when people say, oh, I just really love it. That could stop you from not adjusting that thing. Um, and you may not adjust it, but you know, I'm already rethinking things that people really like. I'm rethinking, hmm, how can I make that better? So, so let's talk mascara for a second. I recently bought a mascara. I've been wearing mascara for 40 probably years. Yeah, probably 40 years. I've been sneaking it on because my mom wouldn't let me wear it when I was seven. <laughs> but I would, we would go on the bus in first grade and put mascara on. One of the things I hate that mascara does is it flakes off. Now, I put my mascara on early in the morning. I want it to last all night long. And I want it to look good. Mascara. So I bought Huda Beauty. Everybody's ranting and raving about Huda. And I'm like, okay, we'll try it. So I bought one uh, Huda Beauty mascara. It was in a, in a gold tube. I tried that mascara. I didn't like it. I, in fact, I hated it. It rubbed off. It flaked everywhere. It made me, the, the thing I did like about it was that it would go on thick and I liked that, that it would go on thick. I go to Sephora again and I'm saying, what is the best mascara? I asked the girls there. What's the best mascara? Huda Beauty. Okay. So I'm like, well, maybe I bought the wrong one. So I bought another one and I'll show it to you because I have it. I bought another Huda Beauty. This one. It's called Legit Lash. I hate it. By three o'clock, it's I've got flakes everywhere. I'm like, are you kidding? What's cool about it, it's got two sides. It's got a lengthening side, and then it's got a volume side. Ooh, cool. Love it. Love that. I spent a lot of money on this. Am I still using it? Yes, until I can get rid of it. 
but I know every time I go to the restroom, I have to look in the mirror and clean off the flakes. So when I develop a product, that's what I am working on. I am working on, okay, does it rub off quickly? How does it feel after five minutes? Um, how do I feel after I use it immediately? What did I like about it? What didn't I like about it? There's products that I didn't like of mine that everyone loved. And I'm like, okay, uh, I don't like it because of this, this, and this. They liked it because of this, this, and this. How could I merge the two? And then when I did merge it, I would ask questions. I haven't gotten to the point yet where someone has said, why did you change that? I haven't got to the point there, so that's good. Um, again, I'm constantly listening, constantly learning, constantly watching people and asking them questions. Um, I added a feature on my um, uh, website that asks people for a comment. I really want to read those comments. Um, I look forward to reading those comments. I want to know what they liked, what they didn't like. I, you know, I just created a bath bomb truffle. I ca I'm calling it a truffle. And that truffle, I've tried bath bombs before and they leave rings around your tub and colors and stuff. And I'm like, oh no, I can't have a bath bomb like that. So when I did some research, I uh, found out how you not, how you create it without it making a ring around your tub. And you know, they're beautiful colors and that's really great, but I don't want the colors to stain my tub, you know, even if it's just a little bit. I, you know, I want a clean tub where I get out, I rinse it off and I'm done. Um, I hope that helps. Thank you so much for coming with me and listening and spending a little time. You know, it that means a lot and I appreciate it. Learning with me and growing with me and um, leave me some comments and tell me what you think and what you like and what you don't like. And if you started a business, if you've tried, if you even thought about doing it, leave me a comment. Let me know. I want, I'd love to hear about it. All right, guys. Thanks.